Good evening. We are going live. And <laughs> ready. Hey, Sister Daphne. Hey, Vicky. Hey, everyone. Hey, Vicky. Sister Jackie. All right. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, I was having some computer issues, but I think we are good. Um, again, everybody hear me all right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Um, so uh, this evening, we are going to work our way through Psalm 70. And uh, there's a very good chance we're going to get into Psalm 71 uh, this evening. So um, we are going to see what God has to say to us uh, with a word for such a time as this. So uh, let's pray. Eternal God, we uh, come to you today needing you, um, not necessarily needing Zoom, not needing Facebook, not needing anything else. We need you. Uh, really, we need you more than we need our next breath. And so we simply ask for your presence to be so heavy this evening. I, Lord, I'm asking, and maybe it is just me, but I, I need to know that you are here that you are in this room with me. And I believe because you are God, you are the omnipresent God, that your presence can be heavy here and with each and every person under the sound of my voice. Lord God, show up. And don't just show up, God, but speak. We need a word. We, we need a paragraph. Um, and we ask that you will use whatever um, that we are about to read in your holy word to comfort us, to strengthen us, to empower us, to um, give us wisdom, to give us strength and courage as we face these days. Lord, I thank you for what we're about to experience because I believe that we are about to have a revival, not a, not a set of services at night, but a revival of our spirits, a renewing of our minds, a freshening of who we are so that we can be who you have called and created us to be. I thank you, God for all those that will listen, and not only those that will listen, but those that will obey what they hear from you this evening. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so uh, we are in, oh, hey, uh, let me go ahead and say this now. Brother Wade, I am sorry. I was supposed to call you and life got in the way. So we'll get up tomorrow, all right? All right. So, all right. So, um, Jackie, can you guess why we're going to make it through Psalm 70 today? <laughs> oh, five verses. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe I'll get through five, or we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. No <laughs> it, there is no guarantee. I, 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 if I, if I can teach half an hour on one verse, five verses <laughs> could be a struggle. That's right. So, uh, but um, so we are going to be in Psalm seventy, the seventieth Psalm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Jackie, can you go ahead and read Psalm 70 for us? Okay. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded who seek my life. Let them be turned back and confused, confounded, confused. Sorry, I'm confounded and confused. <laughs> who desire my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame. Who says, aha, aha. Let all those who seek your, you rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love you, love your salvation, say continually, let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste to me, O oh God. You are my help and my deliverer. Oh, Lord, do not delay. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, this is, um, as listed in probably in most of your Bibles, this is a Psalm of David. And there are, there are a number of reasons why this Psalm could actually take me the full hour to teach. Um, but one of the things that I, I want us to note is that unlike all the other Psalms that we've read up to this point, this psalm is only five verses. And I believe just the lesson in that, we're going to get to some later psalms that are even shorter than that. But I think the lesson in that is, since these are, these are psalms, these are hymns, often they're prayers, that you don't have to pray all day to get your point across. 
You know, so sometimes we feel like uh, by, I think even Jesus said it, sometimes we feel like by much speaking, our prayer will be heard. And that if I just keep talking, you know, and, and you know, cause some of our kids have adopted that mama, 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 mama. And they just keep going and going and going. And they somehow they think that helps. And, and I, I don't remember it helping at least not with either one of mine. So, um, but I, I think we just see that the beauty of this Psalm, it, the words are, and we're going to definitely dive into the words, but the, one of the beauty for the Psalm is that he didn't take a long time to get to it. He came right into it. And so what's the first thing that he says? What, what's the first thing that David says in this Psalm? Make haste. Make haste. Make haste. What does that mean? That, that sounds real. That sounds real King Jamesy almost. To hurry, hurry up. up. There you <laughs> go. Let, 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 let's say it in Shreveport ease. Hurry up. up. Hurry up. 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 Hurry up. Get here. Yes. Get here. What does that imply? That he's in trouble. Okay. So hey, Wade, you're you're muted. I need help. I need help. Like right now. Oh, I agree. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I don't need help next month. Right. I don't now. need help next week. Right now. We're gonna I need help now. now. Wade, what were you gonna say? Oh, I uh, I need help. <laughs> That's yeah. what I said. Yeah, and, and and so and we've talked about this before um, with um, with David and the fact of so when you ask for help. What kind of attitude are you demonstrating? One of desperation. Okay, desperation, I like that. Depends how you ask. Yeah, I would think humble. Okay, humility. Yeah. Okay. Are you gonna say anything else, Wade? I would say uh, um, it, 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 there's a diff it depends on how, uh, how you ask. Where's okay, break, or, break that out or, for me. Well, if I just say help, you don't know, but but I think I can I know in my own personal life where I, I needed something from God, like help, you yeah. know, and, and it's that sense of urgency, the tone, it's the seriousness. Uh, okay. of it. All right. So so I, I, I will give you both of those because I, I would say anytime you ask for help, you're showing humility. The tone will give you urgency. Uh, I, you know, hey, hey, can you help me? I'm kind of, hey, you know, can, can, can I just, you know, need help. Now when I go, hey, I need some help. Yeah. You know, that. so the tone, because either way, I'm, I, and, and the big reason I, I mentioned that is because I know some folks that will refuse to ask for help. No matter what it is, we refuse to ask for help because we don't want to show weakness. And, um, Last I checked, the Bible says something about pride. Pride goes before what? Fall. Destruction. Destruction. And, and, and something else. Well, how does God feel about pride? He hates pride. pride he hates pride. That, that, that just it. Matter of fact, when you, when you list the things, the Bible says uh, uh, seven things God hates, pride's yeah. in there twice. Yeah. Yes. And so... The, and quite frankly, I, I have to, and, and, I, I'm, I, and really, as I'm teaching this, I'm looking directly at myself, um, primarily because I'm the only one on camera, because all y'all all hidden and doing whatever, but that's, that's, that's the side of the point. Um, but um, one of the reasons why I think we get into situations that we can't do anything about is because God is trying to break down the price. Because what does price say? Price is I can do it. I can do it myself. I don't need no help. I got this. I can do this. I, I, I. Matter of fact, in the middle of pride is is I is I. I. Anybody, yeah. anybody know what um, what what got kick, Satan kicked out of heaven? I, 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 I mean, lust of the eye of God is strong. Yes, I will be as good as God. Yeah. I will do this. I yeah. will do that. I yeah. got this. I can do this. I hear. I, I can. And yeah. I really believe for you, Reverend Payne, that the situations that come up in your life is God's way of saying to you, bro, you need help. Mm -hmm. Now, the only question, now, there isn't a question of whether or not you need help. The question is, will you be humble enough to ask for help? And that goes with asking God and the people that God has placed around you in your life to get to where you're trying to go. 
Hmm. All right. And David, over and over and over again, David has not had a problem asking for help. I think I shared this with you before. Some of us, I really believe um, that we, I, I have some people come to me and they will say to me, oh man, you know, I got so much going on. And I'll say, have you prayed about it? And they'll say, oh, I can't pray because God will know I'm only praying because I'm in trouble. <laughs> he already knows you in trouble. <laughs> And, and, and I had to say to them, well, yep. maybe the reason you have trouble is because God knows that's the only time you're going to talk to him. Oh, wow. Because the trouble is not a shock to him. He didn't, mm -hmm. again, God did not wake up this morning going, oh, my gosh, what happened? Mm -hmm. Michael, I, I stepped away for a moment and what happened? Mm -hmm. That wasn't it. God has, God knows what's going on. And sometimes trouble comes in our lives so that God, so we can break down that prideful barrier and recognize that we can't do it all by ourselves. We need help. And the number one person we need help from is. God. Yeah, thank you. Say it. I just want to hear somebody say it. God. Because uh, it, we haven't got there yet, but the 100, you know, in a couple of years, Sonia, we'll get there. The 121st Psalm. I look under the hills from which cometh my help. help. Yeah. My help comes from the Republican Party. Lord. The, Lord. the Lord. Democratic Party. <laughs> Big Mama. No, no, no. Uh -uh. No. The AME Church. Uh -uh. No, not that one either. Oh. No. Yeah. But my help comes from the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. My help comes from the Lord. Sonia, you're, you're, you're muted. I'm trying to read your lips, but it ain't working. I'm talking to myself. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't answer, Sonia. <laughs> so, so, so David starts the song, the 70th song. He starts the song, hurry up and save me. Hurry to my rescue. Hurry to help me. Hurry. Now, again, we talked about this. Is God on a time schedule? No. Nope. So is it a bad thing for David to say to God to hurry? No. No, I got a no. Brother Wade's giving me a shake head no. Anybody no. else? No. And, and I agree. I agree. It's not a bad thing to say because, again, there's no point in us hiding how we feel from God. Well, God, you can just show up whenever you want to. Mm -mm. <laughs> that everything in you is saying, help, hurry up, help. Now. Oh, oh, holiest of fathers, please, whenever thou haveth time, <laughs> please cometh byeth to helpeth me out. Oh, wow. And somehow we feel so holy <laughs> because we've done that. But I don't need holy. I need help. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I need help. I, I need help. And I, I, I feel that I need help now. Now, here's the thing that we have to remember because Mary and Martha had this moment, right? Mm -hmm. Mary and Mar Martha had a hurry up and help moment. Yeah. They, oh, sent yeah. that, they sent that text yeah. to Jesus yeah. and said, hey, yeah. Jesus, the one you love is sick. Yeah. And hurry up and get here. Mm -hmm. And what did Jesus do? Waited three or four Wait. days. He, he, yeah, he, 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 he waited a, days. Mm -hmm. and, and I think they was probably tweeting it. And anybody seen Jesus? If you see Jesus, can you tell him to get over here? Because Lazarus is sick. Mm -hmm. they, they done put it on Facebook. They done posted it. They done got it. They done blasted it out everywhere. And he didn't show up. He didn't, he didn't hurry. See, our hurry isn't his hurry. True. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't still call him. True. Okay? Hurry up and rescue me. Um, Lord, hurry to help me. And again, what do we say? The, everybody, I'm pretty sure your Lord is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Is that correct? Yes. And what, what, what is that? What is that Lord? Yeah, creator God, the creator. Creator God, that's Yahweh. That, that, that's the I am name. That, that, that's the, and, and many of us in the midst of our situation, that's the beautiful things about John. When we talk about, hey, you need to read the book of John, because that's when Jesus goes, mm -hmm. I am the bread of life. I am the shepherd. I am the door. I am the resurrection of life. I am. Mm -hmm. And so when we when we call out to the Lord, you know, if you just have capital L, lowercase O, lowercase R, lowercase D, that's Adonai. That's the ruler. That's the guy he's sitting on the throne. That's good. He's in charge. And and, and there's nothing wrong with talking to dude in charge. But I need to talk to the one who's 
who the creator God. Because a hey, matter of fact, when we do Psalm 121, uh, I, I let's see, I look into the hills uh, for my help. My help comes from the Lord, who did what? He made heaven and earth. He made heaven and earth, and how did he make it? He spoke it into existence. He said it was his word. It was his word, his word. And when we need help, and I, and I, and I, that's right, especially tonight, with all that's going on, what we need is the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. We need his word because that's how he created it. And he created it. He created everything out of word. From word. Speaking. From word. But what was, what, what was out? He spoke into nothing. He spoke into nothing. So, so he. Yeah. The, Matter of fact, the, the first Genesis one says there was chaos. Anybody got some chaos? Any, anybody? You don't have to. Don't confess it now. But but you got some chaos. It, it, th this is why we need the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital E. This is why we need God because He can speak in the chaos. His word moves in the chaos and creates order. And so what does Satan want us to do? When we get into a chaotic moment, Satan is trying to do everything to push us away from the word. Don't go to church and they helped you so far. Don't do this. All this stuff. Well, you, you ain't, don't, don't pray. You need to go do something and don't get in the word. Skip Bible study. You got to go fix the situation. And Satan is trying to keep us from the word because he knows the word will bring order. The word will bring light. And David is saying, hey, um, I need you to hurry up and help me. I, I need you to rescue me. David, again, this is why he's a man after God's own heart. Because when stuff happens, he runs to God. Where do you run when stuff happens? You know, some people run to the bar. Somebody, some people run to other people's beds. Some people run to the pharmacy or the street pharmacist. But where do you run? Run to, we run to the ice cream store and get us a big old thing ice cream i mean you know what where are we placing our trust and that's when struggle will help us struggle lets us know what we really believe because our faith isn't who somebody said this to me your faith isn't really faith until it's tested and, and and if you haven't figured it out yet we we in a test we 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 in the midst of a test and the question is where are we going to run all right so so David runs to God, help me. So what in, in verses two and three, what is David asking for in verses two and three? He's asking for some uh, get back. All right, he's asking for some get back. What kind of get back are you asking for? <laughs> for but for God to uh, uh, put him to shame, uh, uh -huh. you know, to, uh, uh, I would say to uh, destroy them. Mm. Okay. All right, anybody else? What else you see in two and three? Exactly. Well, here, here, let me try it this way. Who is he asking God to quote unquote get? Those that seek to kill him. Those that seek to kill him. His line. Yes. His enemies. And anybody Today. else? Well, let's start with those. Those that seek to kill him. So let's talk about it. Um, let's say, how, how do we define seeking to kill him? Whether they assassinate his character or whether they're trying, you know, to take his life. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I want to make Who saved my life? Yeah. 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 Seeking my life. And, 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 and I, th I think there, uh, we are in Psalm 70, verses two and three. We're in Psalm 70. Um, and, and so one of the things that, because when we think, when we, usually when we think, you know, seeking a life and, and, and killing, we, we, we immediately go to, hey, I'm going to put a knife in your throat and, and I'm going to do that, which that's definitely killing. But how did Jesus define murder? Hmm. Is it harm? He, he went a step further. Jesus said, if you hate your brother without cause. So he, he, he took it not just from the act, he took it to the attitude. 
All right. And so I, and the reason I'm making this point, I'm not making this point so much about how David felt because he knew what people were thinking because he actually did have people trying to take his life. Right. I'm trying to make sure we're not on that side. Remember, I told you when we look at a scripture, we need to look at it from all sides. It's easy for us to look at it like we're David. We need help. Absolutely. We need help. But my question I want to make sure of, we are not the ones causing somebody else to call out for help from God. Okay. Are we killing people's character? Are we killing them softly, but not with a song? Mm -hmm. are, are we abusing people in such a way? Because that's what's going on with us. And we are very clear about that. And God, they're talking about me and they're doing this to me and they keep stabbing me in the back. And, da, 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 and we were very clear, but I need to make sure. Are we reaping what we're sowing? Mm -hmm. Because some, and, I, and absolutely not, please do not get me wrong. Somebody said, the pastor that told me that everything I'm getting, I'm getting because I deserve it. That is not what I said. I said, we need to check. We need to check. Are we living such a life that what people are doing to us is the same thing we're doing to other people? Mm -hmm. We need to check that. Now, if that is a no, which it should be, and everybody, I'm looking at all the names here and people on Facebook, are y'all good, holy people? I know that's not the case for y'all. And so because it's not the case for you, now when you say, when you say to God, hey, God, I need you to help me with these people who are coming to get me, I want them to be disgraced. I want them to be confounded. Let those who wish me harm be turned back and humiliated. God, I need you to get them for me. And, and this is a little different, Brother Wade. I will say this. This was a little different because I've heard him specifically tell, talk about other folks when we read other imprecatory psalms. Hey, destroy them and let them go down to the pit. This one, it's like, you know what? He's dealing more with attitude. I want them to be disgraced. I want them to be humiliated. I'm saying, let me see what I got this other one. Mm -hmm. uh, shame. Yeah, it. shame, disgrace. And mm -hmm. you know what? Paul, uh, Peter and Paul both talk about this. And he says, you know what? We should live such good lives that those that attack us should be put to shame. Mm, mm, mm. You know what that is? That that's when that's when somebody comes to you and tells you that, oh, I saw your pastor out there doing this and doing that. And he was at the hustle club and he was doing this and he was doing that. And you like, I don't sound like you. That don't sound like my pastor. Mm -hmm. And hopefully my life is good enough that you're like, hey, y'all don't know what you're talking about. And I know you coming here trying to stir up dissension and you push them back so that they are shamed for even trying that kind of foolishness. Mm -hmm. But if my life isn't that and you were like, oh, you, oh, you saw him, did you? Mm. Yeah, my, my life ha will not help put him to shame. And I think one of the things David is saying, again, because I'm looking at streams all the way through the Bible. Peter says, hey, if you live the right kind of life, that will help put them to shame. And God will just enact what he's already in his word. And so we need to make sure of that when people are coming at us, they are coming at us, what did Jesus say? Or well, Paul, everybody said it. If you suffer for my sake, are we suffering for the right reason? Or are we suffering because of the mess that we done caused? We done stirred up some stuff and now it's coming back at us. And, uh, I don't know, why is this happening to me? That's what you sowed. Because you started it. You mm -hmm. dug the hole. You fell in it. Now you talk about, I don't know what has happened. Mm -hmm. All right. And so what I believe God is saying to us is, hey, check yourself. Check yourself. Because you could solve the problem. If you fix what you're doing, that might solve the problem. But if you can't, if there's nothing you can do, in this case, you look, God, here's what I need. I, I need you to turn them around. I need you to do it. And again, I go back to the fact that even when we talk about the imprecatory Psalms, the beauty of it is vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Yeah. He, he doesn't tell God, I'll get them. I'll, God, give me the strength to humiliate them myself. Give me the word. Y'all ever, again, I know y'all have never done this, but I just like to say y'all ever do this. Y'all ever have somebody at work that been, you know, doing some stuff to you, and then you went home that night, and you was just thinking about all them things you was going to say, and we going to get by the water cooler, and they going to walk up to me, and I'm going to talk about their hair do, because you know their hair be nasty all the time. That's not your job. 
that that that's not your job. Let me let me say it again. That's not your job. Your job is not to humiliate any. I I don't now let find find me a scripture where it says thou goeth and humiliateth somebody. <laughs> go go make people feel bad. Because even when Jesus say y'all remember y'all remember when uh, Jesus brought the woman into I know y'all do the woman caught in adultery. Yes. And you know they brought the woman in front of Jesus and said, "Jesus, they say we, the word says we should stone her. What she? What do you say? What did Jesus say at first? What did he, what did he, he said, say at first? Who, who without sin cast the first stone? Before, before he said that, why well, I actually, but but before he said that though." Well, really, I guess I shouldn't say that because he said nothing. It says he stooped down and he wrote. That's not writing. Yeah. He said, right. We don't know what he wrote, but here's right. the thing. Could Jesus have humiliated all of them brothers? Oh, yes. Yes. He could have been like, okay, okay, Luke. Uh -huh. let, let me tell you what you did last week and 10 minutes before you came up here. And you, Fred, let me tell you what you did. You notice he didn't do that. Uh -huh. Mm hmm. In all the stuff that Jesus, being the Son of God, could have done to people, you notice he never did that? Yes. He let them figure out themselves that they need to back up. And then he says, hey, you who are out sin, cast the first stone. That way, you know what? They knew what they did. Right. He didn't have to embarrass them. Right. But we spend a lot, no, none of y'all, but I spend a lot of time running around trying to figure out how I can embarrass people. I'll just take that for all of us. And David says, God, I need you to do it. So not only does he talk about the people trying to harm him and the people trying to kill him, there's another group that he's talking about in verse three. Who else does he talk about in verse three? Those who humiliate. Let me see. Those who mock or make fun of him. Okay. That aha means to mock. Okay. Because because when, when, when do people say aha to you? Or Yes. When they think they got you. When they think they got you. Yes, they got you. Oh, 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 you mm -hmm. call yourself a Christian. Uh -huh. I had a I had a case um when I was uh, up in Montana. I just I'd been preaching for I just started preaching and we were doing this thing at work and I was trying to do something and um something happened and it didn't go right and um I yelled a word that y'all wouldn't approve of me as the preacher using. Uh -oh. And yeah, yeah. And the whole place stopped. Right. I can imagine. Now, they use the word all the time. Mm -hmm. They say it all the time. They just it's it's a verb, it's a noun, it, it's a pronoun. <laughs> they use it in every part of speech. But when I used it, yes. I thought you were saved. I thought you knew God. And we have to understand that uh, sometimes there are people who that's all they're doing. They are trying to catch us in something. Mm -hmm. All right. And, mm -hmm. and it's a fact. I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you that it's not that way. I wish I could tell you that everybody's just trying to cheer for you. And sometimes, unfortunately, those people live in your house. Because for whatever reason, your presence makes them feel bad. So they are looking for a way to justify themselves uh -huh. by your mess up. All right. Now, what I, I'm not telling you that you can't mess up because it's going to happen. And when I did, I said, you know what? That You're right. I, am, I should be better than that. And I shouldn't have said that. I didn't try to fight it. I didn't try to defend myself. Well, you know, I was just mad. No, I was wrong. And yeah. what they need to see from us is when we are wrong, we actually confess. Mm -hmm. Somebody remind me, what does it mean to confess? Agree with God. Uh, thank you. It means to agree with God. Doesn't mean just to talk about it. I said it. I said it. Well, that's admitting it. Confessing is I said it and it was wrong. For those who just joined, we are in Psalm 70. Um, we're looking at verse three right now. And, and so one of the reasons why I think David 
what, what, what David says is when those who come to me and say, aha, aha, retreat because of their shame. I want people who are trying to catch me recognize that they was doing something too. Again, this is, this is the brothers standing around the woman caught in adultery. That's what Jesus did. They were, aha, we caught her. Aha. And Jesus was like, um, yeah, you, you, you got your own stuff. And so again, he's teaching us this. I, I, again, I know none of y'all ever do this. But please do not be a person that's sitting around trying to catch somebody else. She call herself holy. Look at her over there. That's aha, aha. Mm -hmm. See, I told, I told you, Brother Wade wasn't all that. I saw it. Mm -hmm. what, 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 have we all of a sudden become the propriety police? And we trying to catch somebody doing wrong? It, would, it might almost be okay if we would cheer for them when they did right, but all we want to do is see it when they've done wrong. Mm -hmm. And so we do not need to be in that spot because that's why, hey, probably one reason why a lot of times we end up retreating in our shame. But David is speaking out. And again, if you know, if you are in the midst of a situation where people try to kill you, people trying to harm you, people trying to catch you in something, if you feel like you're being put upon, that is the way, God help me. Help me now. I, I need your help. And, and, and a lot of times we need God's help because we need his help to keep our mouths closed. Because I'm about to say something, God. I need you to show up quick, please. Because they say it, aha, aha to me. And I got some things I'd like to say back. But I don't want to do that because that's not who I am anymore. David's a warrior. I, I appreciate David. David has killed giants. Mm. David has killed his 10,000s. And in the midst of these situations, when he can just slay people, he's like, God, help me. He had the power. Now, what we don't know, I don't know if he wrote the song before he was a king or after the king, but heck, if he wrote the song after he was anointed, hey, I'm the king, I'll get him later. I don't even see David doing that. I see David saying, God, I need you to take this. Because that goes in God's job jar, not in ours. All right? Okay, Brother Wade, uh, read for me verses 4 and 5. Psalm 70, verses 4 and 5. Okay. And, and, and Pastor, uh, before I do, uh, can I yeah. say, uh, uh, he was uh, using meekness, you know, which was power under control, but his power under control of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And before, before he reads, anybody else, any questions or comments about verses 1 through 3 of Psalm 70? Yeah. I put them in front of the door. That stopped the drill. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions, comments? Psalm 71 through 3? Okay. Go ahead, Brother Wade. Four and five. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation always say, let God be exalted. Yet I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. Oh, Lord, do not delay. And that right. was from NIV. Thank you very much, Brother Wade. All right. So um, mm. after, after asking God, because I see a lot of let's here. Let those who seek to kill me be disgraced. Let those who wish to harm me be turned back. Let those who say, aha, aha, retreat. Now, again, we have a turn. He didn't use the but this time, but we see it in the text. So I've talked about those who seek to kill me. I've talked about those who um, seek to harm me. I've talked about those who say, aha, aha. Now, who does he talk about in verse four? He's talking about uh, uh, God's people. Okay, and how does he define, how does he define God's people? Um, um, let's see here. And let those who, uh, those who seek love you. you. There you go, there you, very simple. Those who seek you, what does it mean to seek? To go after. Go. I like that. Go after, Sonia. What'd you say? I said to go after. Okay, go after. Anybody else? Who calls on him? <laughs> okay. And, and Miss Washington, what did you say? Search for. Search for. There, there is intent. Mm -hmm. there, there is intent. I, I am looking for something that that seeking implies that I am I am striving to actually find it. 
Mm. You know, I, I shared with you um, the way that I, um, I used to, I, well, yeah, of course I used to because she's much older now, but I used to play hide and seek with Diana. She'd mm. want to play hide and seek. And I'd say, okay, baby, you go hide and daddy will count. And daddy would sit on the couch and turn on the TV. And Ayana would say, okay, I'm ready. And I'd go, okay, baby. <laughs> oh, girl, you really hiding today. <laughs> you were not seeking her. <laughs> oh, baby, I don't know where you at. <laughs> and so y'all laughing at me, but that's the way some of us do God. <laughs> I'm looking for you, God. <laughs> I can't wait to find you. Oh, Lord, I seek it be. No, he because we ain't really looking. We ain't, we ain't really looking for God. And then we call ourselves God's people. And I like the way we said it. He said, hey, he's, he's saying, let God's people. Who are God's people? The people who seek him. As a matter of fact, when uh, in Hebrews eleven six, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because he who pleases God must do what? Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Believe that he is and seek him. And seek him. Seek him. See, we 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 think we good because we believe. I believe. I believe, but God is not pleased with just believe. Why? Because the demons believe. Yeah. Hey, they don't even just believe, they know for a fact. And they are doing everything except seek him. So it's not good enough for us just to believe in him. We got to be looking for him. I got to be looking for him in the middle of my pain, in the middle of my struggle, no matter what's going on. I need to be looking for God, his presence, his word, his power, his peace, and everything I do. We wake mm -hmm. up looking for God. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see you, God. I I've got a dark cloud, but my silver lining is God, and I know he's in there somewhere. I, I know his presence is real. About, ah, I'm all alone. Nothing's going right. Well, something's going right because God is here. Mm -hmm. And are we so busy looking at the size of our problem that we're missing the presence of our God? Because it, it's, a, it's a very bad thing. I'm going to do this, everybody. You saw, so you see my phone? Is God bigger than my phone? <laughs> very big. He, he better be. But you know what? When I put my phone... Uh, the closer I get my phone, mm -hmm. I can't see. Mm -hmm. I can't see. My phone is very small. It, it, it's smaller than everything. But when I get all up into it, I can't see what I'm supposed to see. Right. And sometimes our problems, is God bigger than your problems? No. Yeah. Wait, is, is yeah. God bigger than your problems? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I, yes. I, heard you. I had to play back what I said because I was like, no, no. I was like, I was like, uh oh, I gotta turn this Bible so to y'all because I don't know what kind of problems y'all got. Because <laughs> them kind of problems might be contagious. I, I don't need none of them. <laughs> so let's try this one more time. This, this is being broadcast all over. Is is God bigger than your problems? Yes. 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 If God is bigger than your problems, then your focus should not be on your problems. Your focus should be on your uh, on your God. All right. Now look, I'm not saying that's easy. Did you ever hear me say it's easy? No. Nope. Because it, it, it's that distraction. You know, the problems are the shiny thing. You know, we talk about the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And our problems are squeaking all, oh, they're making all this noise. And we like, oh, I got to, I got to do that. And God's like, mm, look at me, mm -hmm. seek me. But God, I got to deal with this first. Mm -hmm. Seek first oh, God. the kingdom, kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Seek him first, and then we'll take care of the squeak. But we are so busy taking care of the squeak. We are searching for all the squeaks in our lives so that I can fix all the squeaks that we miss the presence of God. And D David starts out, let all those who seek you do what? Be joyous and be glad. But wait, but no, no, I got problems though. I mean, I, I, got, I got situations. I, I, I can't be expected to rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. I can, mm -hmm. yes. but things are, but everything's not perfect. I know, but God said it had to be perfect. Oh, he didn't say it had to be perfect. 
No, he didn't say he had to be perfect. Oh. Rejoicing. So, so if I'm not rejoicing in my perfect circumstances, what am I supposed to rejoice in? Perfect God. Oh! In God. <laughs> in God. That, that's why Paul says, rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. 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 somebody tell me, where was Paul when he wrote that? In jail. He was in jail. Yeah. He was on death row. <laughs> And he had the nerve to write to people, rejoice. And he didn't just write it once. He said, and again, I, I say rejoice. Know. He was not rejoicing because he was in jail. He was not rejoicing because he was in death row. He was rejoicing because the presence of God was with him. And my question for us is, are we rejoicing? Are we just happy about our circumstances? Or are we willing to rejoice about the presence and the power of our God? Anybody remember uh, the three Hebrew boys? Of course, mm -hmm. y'all remember. Y'all know the story. But but I don't even want to talk about the story when they got in the fire. I want to talk about the story before they got in the fire. Mm -hmm. So y'all remember Nebuchadnezzar heated up the thing. He said, "Look, y'all need to bow. Right. Y'all need to bow." Anybody remember what they said? They, they weren't going to. They only no God, no other God. They we're, were not, not going to bow. bow. Nope. Yeah. And what else, anybody remember what else they said? There was one last thing they said. If I die, I die. That, yeah. Essentially, that's what they said. They yeah. said, they said, you know, look, we, 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 what'd you say, Sister Smith? No, I just like when they let him know that even if he doesn't rescue them, uh -huh. it was because he couldn't. <laughs> that's the rejoicing part. Yeah. And our faith gets to the point of when we say, you know what, God, you can do this. You can get me out of this. You can heal this. You can pay this. You can do all of this. But even if you don't, that will be done. I'm going to worship you. Yeah. yeah. That is the faith. That is the real faith of the three Hebrew boys. It wasn't um, the fact that they went in and got, no. It was the fact that even before they went in and said, look, if you throw us in a fire, he's still God. Yeah. The, the, the negative situation is not going to cause us to not celebrate who he is. And, 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 and I think that's my thing. And, and as we get closer to the end of the year, everybody's like, oh, I'll be so glad when 2020 is gone. Have we missed an opportunity to rejoice? We spent a whole year talking about how bad it is. Hmm. Yes. Whole year talking about people getting sick. Whole year talking about people dying. A whole year talking about this. And I, I, and again, I'm not saying that stuff didn't happen. But I'm just asking the question, have we missed a golden opportunity to celebrate our God? Because if nobody gets healed, if there is no vaccine, if nothing changes, if the economy never turns around, is he still God? Yeah. Or is he just, or are we just looking for the gift giver? We're looking for the Santa Claus God. We 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 looking for the uh, we're looking for the God of the uh, of the vending machine. Mm. I put my money in. Mm. I want my juju bees. Mm. <laughs> B seven. Mm -hmm. And is that is that what we're looking at? Or are we are we of all people? The people who claim to be seeking God. Are we just, oh, well, oh, what a bad year. I can't wait till next year. Well, if we ain't going to worship him this year, why 2021 going to be any different? May not be. There's an attitude adjustment. And again, I, I think I'm just, I'm looking at me. An attitude adjustment. And again, this is not about denying what's wrong, but this is about focusing on what's right. Or let me say it this way, because we all say, hey, what's wrong with you? Every once in a while, we need to ask ourselves, what's right with you? All right. What's right with me is the presence of God. Well, you know, you ain't done everything right. Yeah, but he loves me anyway. Mm -hmm. That's what's right with me. What's right with me is my God still has a plan, but all this stuff is messed up. I know, but what's right with me is God's plan for me. What's right is that Romans 8.28 is still in the book. Ain't nobody deleted it. Ain't, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, it's still there. All things work together for the good. This is all working for the good. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to When you look like an idiot rejoicing in the middle of COVID. Mm -mm. All right. 
so I should just sit here and, and, and pour mouth with everybody else? I claim to be one who is seeking God. And David says, let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Our joy is in God. Unless we're looking for it somewhere else. And maybe that's why our problem, our problem is because we want joy in our pocketbook. I want joy in my bank account. I want joy in my job. I want joy in all of my relationships. Anybody been disappointed by any of those? <laughs> We've been disappointed by all of those, but we keep going back. That, that, what's the definition of insanity? Crazy. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Doing the same thing. We yeah. trusted in the same people. We trusted in the same system. We trusted in all of this stuff. And we expect this time it's going to be different. <laughs> this election's going to be different. Mm. This job's going to be different. This church is going to be different. <laughs> How about the God that's always been the same? Mm -hmm. The constant. What'd you say? The call? Yes, the constant. The constant. The constant. The constant. The constant. The concept, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things about being a math major, that matter of fact, Trinity asked me to help me with her, her, her with some trigonometry. I'm so excited, but uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait to do some trigonometry. I ain't done trigonometry in a long time. But one thing about, one of the things about those math problems, the algebra problems, every problem has a variable, but then they also have a constant. And the constant makes a lot of decisions about what the variable is able to do. And we need to focus on the constant and stop worrying about the variables. Okay, so let those who seek you rejoice and be glad. Let those who love your salvation. Anybody love your salvation? Let those, let, what, what, what should they do? Those who love his salvation, what should they do? Shout, God is great. And God be magnified. All right, so I, I, I like the version that says, you know, that, that sounds like let God be magnified. What's it mean to magnify something? Praise him. Bigger. Make it bigger. Okay. Do you actually make it bigger? Well, it appears bigger. Uh -huh. I say make it bigger because it's your problem should be smaller. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But actually, I just heard Tony Evans teach on this, and that's why I said it. Because he talked about, you know, when we magnify something, you know, you put it under the microscope, you don't actually make it. It's not, but it yeah. looks bigger. Yeah. It looks big because really, what is our issue? Our issue is our perception. Yeah. Our issue is our perception that our problem is so huge. But if I magnify God, guess what? He looks bigger. Yeah. He looks bigger. And we need it. And, and how often he says, hey, hey, let those who love your salvation say once in a while, magnify our God be magnified. Is that what it says? Yeah. Continually. Yeah, Oh, continually. Mm -hmm. What does continually mean? Never stop. None stop. You know, you, you know why we should Not magnify feasting. God nonstop? Because some of us can testify this. Our problems are nonstop. True. Anybody got problems to take a holiday? Any, any, any of your problems looking at Christmas going, well, we're going to take that day off. <laughs> well, it's the weekend. Problems say, okay, we'll see you Monday morning. <laughs> I don't know, if y'all got some problems like that, can I please have them? Because <laughs> my problems seem to want to work 24 hours a day. My problem's like Whataburger. <laughs> they always open. <laughs> they, they don't even close on Christmas. My problems are, are there. But what God says here, 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 here's how you fight that. If your problems are ever present, so am I. So am I. Yes. And magnify continually reminding yourself and those around you that God is bigger. Yeah. yeah. That, that God is bigger. What happened? That's who I've never seen a yeah. We've never seen a year like this before. But you know what? This year has never seen a God like mine before. Mm -hmm. I have not heard, I have not said that once in 2020. Been 12 months. I have not talked about how big my God is when somebody brings up. How bad 2020 is a year. And we've said it every day. This, this will be a Christmas. Like we you know what? Last Christmas was a Christmas we've never seen before. <laughs> every day is a day we've never seen before. But our God, when do we talk? Robert Payne Jr. 
not senior, because you here too, but Robert Payne Jr. When do we talk about how great our God is? And I shouldn't even wait for the situation. I should just be building it up. Oh, God is good. Oh my gosh, he's good. God. Thank you, God. Because you know what? I'm looking for him everywhere I go. Somebody said that to me today. I was talking to him and they said, oh, you got so much to go happening. And I said, yeah, but you know what? I'm just looking for God to show up. He's like, wow, that, that's, wow, you're just finding the, you're just finding the silver lining. Well, I, I call it whatever you want to call it, but I'm looking for something greater. I'm looking and I refuse because when we talk about depression and, and while depression, yes, there is that clinical part of it, but a lot mm -hmm. of times we are depressed. Why? Because of what we're focused on. Mm -hmm. And if I continually focus on the negative, yep. we shouldn't be surprised. You know, it's like when I, I, when, when Lim and I first met, she could always tell I was upset or having a bad day because I'd be sitting in my apartment listening to Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood. I'd pull up the country music because I wanted to hear about how they dog died and how they truck broke down and how all that bad stuff happened. And, and Linda would come over and she's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm sitting there like, oh, well, you know. And, and it's no wonder because I kept going down because I was sitting in the dark listening to people complain about their problems and wondering why I wasn't feeling any better. I just don't know why I'm not feeling better. Because your focus is on everything wrong. Change your focus. Change your focus. Change your future. Just made that up. Y'all tweet that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our focus needs to be on God. Not once in a while. Continue. How long? Hey, how often are you supposed to pray? <laughs> once a day to keep the devil away. 24-7. Oh, continually. Huh. Really? I'm, I'm supposed to pray continually? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to tell God he's great continually. I'm supposed to praise continually. That sounds like lifestyle stuff. See, we've made it part of our lives. And God is saying it should be your life. We've relegated it to, hey, a couple hours, a couple of minutes in the morning. I'll give you a couple of hours on, the, on Sunday. And we wonder why we beat down. He said, hey, how often do you need to breathe? Continuously. <laughs> we need to breathe continuously because if you don't guess what bad stuff and i would have to argue now again i'm not saying bad stuff won't happen if we celebrate god continually if we pray with god but i bet we'll be able to handle it better and, and, and again, we're, we're, you know, one of the things, and, and whenever I go do a funeral, I always talk about this, it's about coping. How do we conquer our pain every day? Cope, conquer our pain every day. Because every day, any, anybody got pain every day? Because again, if, if you don't, I need to change lives with you. Because if you got like twice a week pain, I, 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 I will be glad to trade lives with you. Day at a time. But I got everyday pain. So I got to know how to deal with it. And he says, hey, you know what? Rejoice in God. Rejoice in God. Not, not, don't rejoice after the circumstance changes, because what if the circumstance never changes? And that's when our Hebrew brothers said, if it doesn't change, I'm still worshiping him. Yeah. He's still God. Okay? And so uh, the last verse, <laughs> I love this. Uh, in the Christian Standard Bible, I am oppressed and needy. Hurry to me, God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. I, I, I love the confession. I, I, I'm needy. I may be the king. I may be the psalmist of Israel. I, I may be all of this stuff, but the world thinks I'm, but you know what? I need thee. Mm -hmm. oh, every hour. Come on, I need every 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who wrote it, he, he had a better life than I do. I, I need him every 20 seconds. He, he, an hour. I, 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 well, I probably need him every five seconds, but you know, I'm trying to be manly right now. Well, don't mm -hmm. put that one in. If you withdraw yourself from me, where would I be? <laughs> where would I be? <laughs> and, and, and that attitude. And again, I, I've told you before, and I, I, I think it's wonderful because I keep saying, oh gosh, we gotta, we gotta go do something else. Get, let, let's get out of the Psalms and go do something else. And then every week life hits me in the face. And God said, okay, 
go to the psalm. Go to the next one. No, God, I gotta, I gotta search through the Bible and find the right psalm. <laughs> Just go to the next psalm. Mm. Read the next psalm, and you will find what you're dealing with. Yeah. And I, again, I don't know about y'all, but smack in the face. All kinds of stuff happening all around. And God said, hey, Psalm 70. Oh, but it's not a long, deep psalm. Nobody quotes Psalm 70. Well, maybe we should. Mm. Maybe we should. Help me, Lord. Yes. I am poor and needy. I will confess it right now. I oh, don't, Somebody said, don't, don't admit your ignorance. Don't, don't admit you need help. What, mama, my mama taught me this. Uh, I think I, I've shared this story with y'all. She was trying to help me with some math. And she asked, she didn't know what how to do it either. And we and she said, Did you ask your teacher? And I said, No. Because if I ask my teacher, she'll know I don't know. Mm. And my mother, in her godly wisdom, said, Well, when you fail the test, she'll know you don't know. <laughs> well, you might want to ask for help. God, I need help. I don't want to fail the test. We talked about this last week when David said, hey, I don't want the people around me to be ashamed of what I'm going through. Mm. I, the test is going to come. I want to handle it well. I'm not even going to say take the test away because in this world, you will have trouble. The test, the test that we face have got us to where we're at today. Right. The struggles that we went through were for a purpose. When you went to the gym, you, you know, no one, no one celebrates a gym workout. That's not, Sonia. When you go to the, when you get on that treadmill, you don't just do it at like half a mile per hour, right? Just have a nice leisurely stroll. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a good workout! Ah, anybody ever do that? Because no. if we do, that's why some of us look the way we look. Because that's how we doing. Mm -hmm. But we go on. We have a workout. Yeah, there is stress. There is there is pain. There is ache. There is struggle. But it's struggle for a purpose. And when you're done, you feel better. You look better. Things are moving. And God is saying, "Hey, you think the treadmill? Some? Let me show you what I can do with your life." But when we want to avoid that, when we want to get away from it, things don't go right. We've got to go through. Yay! Though I walk it, not around the valley of the shadow of death. Ooh. Not over the valley of shadow of death. Not under the valley of shadow. Yo, I walk through the valley. We're walking through a valley, y'all. Yeah. But he says, I, I fear no evil because thy rod and thy staff are with me. Huh? And, and wait, if, if the rod and staff are with us, then that means his presence is with us. And what else? Brother Way, you know this answer. What else is in his presence? Uh, the fullness. The fullness of God. Full, not just the fullness of God, the fullness of joy. Oh, I enjoyed it. But the fullness of joy is in his presence. So mm -hmm. even though I'm in the valley, he's saying you can still have joy because it's a choice. I have a choice to rejoice. Oh, I made a rhyme. Look at me, me and me and Jesse Jackson. <laughs> I, I, I'm making a choice. And, and, and our question is, in the midst of all that's going on, in the midst of these holidays and all of this stuff, you know, everybody excited because we got a vaccine. Well, praise the Lord for a vaccine, but I think I should have been praising the Lord before a vaccine. All right. I'm just saying, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm going to take the vaccine, just so you know, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it, but I'm going to trust God. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to trust God. And not only am I going to trust God, I'm not only going to believe him, I'm going to see him. I'm going to seek him everywhere I go because I need him everywhere I go. Amen. Everywhere I go. God, you, you, you going, what did Moses say when, when, when they were going to leave? And God said, I ain't going with y'all. And Moses said, well, if you ain't going, I ain't going either. But that's the promised land. Mm -mm. It ain't no promised land if God ain't there. Yeah. And I think that's why James, later on, he said, y'all talking about, hey, I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there. You said, if the Lord wills. Said, God, where are you going today? Because wherever right. you're going today, <laughs> that's where I'm going today. Well, I'm going to your work and we're going to get some work done. Let's go. Mm -hmm. But we like, God, God, come on, follow me, God. <laughs> mm -mm. God, where are you going today? Mm. And I'm going to celebrate you. Well, I'm walking through the valley today. You want to come with me? Well, 
I don't know. <laughs> if you going but if you gonna be there, that's right. If you gonna be there, you know what I got? I uh, I I used to. Um, I've always hated shopping, but when I was younger, um, if the pretty girls were going shopping, somehow I convinced myself I could put up with it for a little while. <laughs> Not because I loved the environment of shopping, uh -uh. but because I loved the company. Mm -hmm. 2020 might not be your thing, but the company is great. Hmm. And I want to encourage us in the midst of all that we're doing and all that we're facing, all that we're experiencing, let's enjoy the company. People, like, how was the mall? I don't know anything about the mall because I wouldn't focus on the mall. Well, how was 2020? You know what? Because I was with God the whole time, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. But, but what about this? And what about that? Or did that happen? Well, it did happen. But I was with God and somehow it was better. And I want us to adjust our focus. We got what? What, what day is today? The 16th? We got two weeks. We got just over two weeks left of this year. Let's rejoice in him. Actually, let's seek him. Let us actually be the people who are seeking him. He's not that far. He, 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 he's nearby. And, and and I told y'all, he, he plays hide and seek like my niece. My niece would go hide and she'd go, Uncle Bobby, I'm over here. <laughs> I'm like, Aubrey, you're supposed to be hiding. I am hiding. I'm hiding in the closet. <laughs> you know why? Because part of the fun for her was being found. Uh -huh. And God, he's not hiding to stay hidden. He's hiding to be found. And let's find him every day, everywhere, looking for him and seeing the beauty that is God, despite what we're going through. Amen. Now, Miss Jackie, this is your fault because I was going to try to get all the way through this psalm. And I know. I... And, and you didn't let me do it. And so I'm blaming Jackie on this one. That's right. God, the woman you gave me. <laughs> He's part of my church. He held me up. <laughs> but uh, hey, um, in all seriousness, and, and I, I really do want to encourage you. I, I, I can't tell you when your situation is going to change. Quite frankly, I can't even tell you if it's going to change. But I can tell you that God is there. Yes. That, that God is there. I think the, the, the Hebrew name for that is Jehovah Shema. God is there. And so in the midst of your pain, be it high, be it low, he is there. Not only is he there, but his love is there. Paul said that you might know how high and how wide and how deep is the love of God. Well, I'm so low. Good. His God, his love is up under you. Amen. And, I, and I, I just want us to get that mindset. Again, again we keep talking about this renewing of your mind so that because when we think differently in the midst of these struggles, we'll be able to handle them better. The struggles aren't going to stop. In this world, you will have trouble. Mm -hmm. But rejoice because <laughs> I have overcome the world. And so I'm not waiting to, I'm not, wait, I'm not waiting for the shot to go through the hoop. I believe it's going in just because he's got the ball. All right. Any questions or comments about Psalm 70? No, sir. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah. So um, let's see. So a couple of things I want to say before we pray. Um, Saturday, I sent out an email. Hopefully you got it. Um, about uh, Saturday, we've got the Shreveport Monroe District um planning meeting starting at 10 well the service started at 10 i think the the zoom will open up at 9 45 and we'll start at 10 um sunday we'll have church and then we're going to do caroling meeting at the church leaving at three sunday afternoon um next monday is our blue christmas service and i want to encourage you to come out to be a part of that and to share with your friends so that we can um 
rem rem remember so that we can seek him even when we're not feeling like it. Mm -hmm. And then um, next Wednesday, we will have Bible study uh, just before church. Uh, well, Christmas Eve, Christmas, and we'll go from there. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you very much for your time and attention. Let's pray. Father God, forgive us. Forgive us for killing people's character. Forgive us for looking to catch people in stuff and saying, aha, aha. Forgive us for our foolish pride that has said, I can do this on my own. Forgive us for our pride that has said, once I get this cleaned up, then I'll come to God. Lord God, help us to echo the words of David to say, we are poor and needy. We are oppressed. We are abused. Everything's not going right. Our trouble is on us 24 hours a day. But though our trouble is on us, you are with us. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for being an ever-present help in our time of need. And we need you right now. We need you physically as we deal with the health issues that we have. We need you mentally and emotionally as we struggle through the, 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 the quarantine and all of these different things. We need you financially. We need you spiritually. We need you. And Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, we need all of you. We need you to be there, Lord God, and we need spiritual eyes to see you. Lord, give us a hunger and thirst that we might search for you in every circumstance, in every place that we are, that we look not just for the silver lining, we look for the powerful God. And Lord God, help us to recognize your presence everywhere we are and rejoice in you, even if our circumstances don't change, God. Help us to celebrate you like we've never celebrated before. If the world looks at us and you must be crazy, yes, we are crazy in love with an all-powerful God. Lord, I thank you for those who are hearing me right now. I'm thanking you for those you were speaking to. I thank you for the change that will occur in our lives, not in our circumstances, but in our recognition of who you are and how we should approach you. Lord, give us a praise. Lord, you already have. You said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And Lord, we are breathing. So remind us that with every breath we take that we should praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, whatever is going on, yeah. Lord, we will be careful. Not just saying, we will be careful to give you all the honor, all the glory and all the praise because you are worthy no matter what's happening around us. It yes. is in the name of our risen Savior that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time and attention. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, everybody. Hey, Mama Bunny. Hi. Hi. Hello. Okay. Um, in the morning? Uh, at some point, so that we can get together. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, um, yeah. It, it'll just take a short time. I, I may. Uh, I may do uh, Operation uh, uh, Great Escape. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> yeah. Have a blessed night. God Everybody bless you. God bless you, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, Miss Payne. Hey, Miss Payne. Hi. Hey, well, we miss your other half. Oh, there he is. Hello, Keith. How you doing? Look, I, I didn't you see look, you earlier. If you, if you want to see the other half, look. Yeah, uh, I didn't say his carbon copy. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd see him here. I heard him. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Bye, good. Bye, 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 Hey. I know why you're so happy, Wade. Get on off the thing. <laughs> <laughs> this year, so you brother, catching a cold? No, Brother Smith, I said hi. It is. I think I got to someone down the wrong pipe, and I probably coughed too long. But Oh, okay. I'm going to go do my mama's uh, remedy, some warm salt water, and just goggle with it. It'll go. Yeah, away. I'll do it. That'll do it. Uh, <laughs> see y'all later. Bye. 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 Bye, buddy. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs>